We're now going to see some additional techniques for sketching parameterized curves. And these are eliminating the parameter t and using symmetry. So let me first show you how eliminating the parameter t works through an example. So the example will be to sketch the curve x equals a cosine t, y equals b sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. And here a and b are some positive constants. Now eliminating the parameter t means I want to write an equation that every point on this curve satisfies which does not have any t in it. So how can I write an equation that x and y have to satisfy? Well I see cosine and sine so I want to use my favorite trig identity, which is cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So to get that identity, I take x over a, which is cosine of t, and square it. And then I add y over b, which is cosine of t, excuse me, sine t, squared, and that has to equal 1. So every point on the curve must satisfy this equation. Now that we have this equation, we recognize it as the equation of an ellipse. So I can sketch the ellipse in the plane. So when y equals 0, it intersects the x-axis at the points a0 and minus a0. And when x equals 0, it intersects the y-axis at the point 0b and 0 minus b. Now we have to be a little careful because depending on what the range of the parameter is, we may or may not actually get the entire ellipse. We might only get part of it. So let's check. So at time t equals 0, we're here, the point a0. At time t equals pi over 2, we've moved over to 0b. At time t equals pi, we're at minus a0. At time t equals 3 pi over 2, we're at 0 minus b. Then at time t equals 2 pi, we're back where we started. So it's just like the circle. We've just stretched the x-axis by a factor of a, and we've stretched the y-axis by a factor of b. In particular, the arrow goes counterclockwise as before. All right, let's do another example. So example, sketch the curve uh, x equals cosine cubed t, y equals sine cubed t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So again, I want to eliminate the parameter using cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And I can do that by raising everything to the 2 thirds power. So if x to the 2 thirds plus y to the 2 thirds equals 1. Now, in general, if you're raising numbers to um, non-integer powers, there are issues if those numbers are negative. Here it's OK, because um, you can take the square of a number and take its cube root, and that's always well defined. But to avoid confusion, let's first look at the part of the curve where t just goes from 0 to pi over 2. And this will ensure that x and y will be non-negative. OK, now I want to sketch what this curve looks like. Um, to see how to do that, let's look a little more generally at a curve of the form x to the p plus y to the p equals 1, where p is a positive constant, and where we restrict to the part where x and y are non-negative. So we already know a couple of examples of this. If p equals 1, then we get a line segment like this. And if p equals 2, then we get 
a quarter of the unit circle like this. So it's tempting to guess that when p equals 2 thirds, which is the case we actually care about, that we get something on the other side looking like that. And that's actually correct. Um, if you want to confirm that um, the curve really is, is curving upwards like this, um, recall that if you have some function y of x, if, if d squared y dx squared is greater than 0, then the graph in the xy plane is going to curve upwards like this. And this is called convex. And if d squared y dx squared is less than 0, then the graph is going to curve downwards like this. And this is called concave. Now, uh, Stewart's calculus book uses some alternate terminology like concave up and concave down. I can never remember which of those is which, and that's not the standard mathematical t terminology. So I'll just use the standard terminology, which is convex and concave. Okay, so to check that this graph is convex, then what you have to do is take the equation x to the two-thirds plus y to the two-thirds equals one, solve for y as a function of x, calculate the second derivative, and check that that's positive. So you can do this, but um, I'll leave that as an exercise for you if you're really interested. But if not, then just looking at p equals 1 and p equals 2 makes it very plausible that it's going to come out like this. Okay, so this is just the part of the curve where t goes from 0 to pi over 2, and it has an arrow on it like this. Now how do we get the rest of the curve? So we're going to get the rest of the curve using symmetry. So if you look at values of t that are not between 0 and pi over 2, you're sort of going to get the same kinds of values for cosine t and sine t, except switching the sine of one or both. Okay, So the part of the curve that we sketched, that's where cosine t and sine t are positive, but then one or both can be negative. So what you have to do is take the part of the curve that we've got and just um, for each point x, y, you look at the points uh, minus x, y, like so if you have a point x, y over here, I have minus x comma y over there, x comma minus y down there, and minus x comma minus y down there. Or in other words, you take this curve and reflect it around both axes. So when I reflect around the y-axis, this is y and this is x, I get the part of the curve from t equals pi over 2 to t equals pi. Right, so this is t equals 0, this is t equals pi over 2, this is t equals pi. And then to get the rest of the curve, I reflect over the x-axis, and I'm going to get a picture like this. So this is where t equals 3 pi over 2, and t equals 2 pi, and back to the start. So that's the curve. Yeah, and this curve has a name, it's called an asteroid. This has no relation to the heavenly bodies between Mars and Jupiter. Um, anyway, so those are a couple of examples of how you can sketch parameterized curves by eliminating the parameter t and using symmetry.